This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 685 of the Dressage Radio Show, official podcast of the United States Dressage Federation on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. This week's show will feature U.S. World Championship team rider Katie Durhammer, who stays on afterwards to give us a tip on gratitude. This is Reese Koffler Stanfield from Georgetown, Kentucky. And this is Philip Parks from Rockwood, Ontario, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. Hi, Phil. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. We're recording <laughs> early, so yep. you know everybody knows um, you're off to regionals. I think you said that last week, mm-hmm. but uh, we just kind of wanted to remind everybody about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we do. Uh, that was funny. Yeah, we, we do. I'm excited. I know it's regional championship time in the U.S. Uh, I know Canada's slowing down a little bit because of the weather, but uh, we're full steam ahead down here. And um, yeah, so we're recording early. I've got to head to St. Louis actually on Thursday, which is typically the night we record. So I am looking forward to it. I'm taking two wonderful horses and it's, it's, and I'm taking a good friend of mine. She, she comes uh, with us uh, when I need a a head groom. She's, she's like our head, Miss Lori. She runs the farm here too. She's uh, we're going to go, she's from St. Louis. So uh, we're going to have, we're going to have a little fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to a little, vacation kind of working vacation, but you know, I, I love these two horses. So, um, it, it's going to be a fun, a fun couple days, uh, that we're gone. So, uh, we're recording early and this is going to be a treat. You're going to love this program. Katie Durheimer, who just rode at the world championships was so gracious with her time. And it turned out she just became her own episode. I got to know her. Uh, we, like I said, we're, we're stall mates last year at festival. So I got to get to know her a little bit and, and we stayed in touch and truly it, it was just been a joy and a pleasure to watch her this summer. And you know, have a little skin in the game, uh, in a way and, and to watch her and Adrian and, and, and Stefan and Ashley, I mean, all the riders for the U S uh, you know, as you get to know them, they're all amazing people and, you know, you're just thrilled that they're uh, representing our country. So, uh, I think everyone's going to really enjoy this episode. So we're going to get right into it, uh, right after this break from Kentucky performance products. This Nutrition Minute is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products, the company that simplifies your search for research-proven nutritional supplements at kppusa.com. The horse that matters to you matters to Kentucky Performance Products. Managing horses can be challenging. Each horse's personality affects the way he behaves and reacts to the world around him. Horses with certain dispositions can be at higher risk for developing health problems than others. High-strung or excitable horses are easily stressed, but so is the timid, quiet warrior. Stressed horses are more likely to develop digestive upsets that lead to colic, diarrhea, and ulcers. Nalox Advanced was specifically developed to support a digestive tract that is under stress. It sustains proper pH levels, reducing the incidence of ulcers and hindgut imbalances while simultaneously supporting the healing of damaged tissues. Nalox Advanced supports the complete digestion of starches and sugars and sustains populations of beneficial bacteria. Make life a little easier on your sensitive horse and start him on Nalox Advanced today. To learn more about the ingredients in Nalox Advanced, visit Kentucky Performance Products at kppusa.com. Well, tonight, this is truly an honor. And as everybody knows, when I start interviewing world championship riders, I get a little nervous. So I'm so excited to have Katie Durheimer. She's on the, uh, she was my, my stall mate last year at festival. I got to know her and all her team. And, uh, truly I've been cheering her on all year and seeing her go to Europe. And, uh, Katie, I'm thrilled you're on our show with us tonight. Thank you so much, Reese. It's really fun to be here. And, I'm super, super thrilled with the summer and how it's gone, and it still definitely feels a little bit surreal, so I'm excited to chat about it. 
I, I can't even imagine. I mean, you have ridden at the world championships. I just, I'm like, I have stars thinking about it. So it's, let's start from the beginning. Can you introduce yourself to our listeners and then we'll go to, to your amazing horses. So my name is Katie Durhammer, um, formerly Johnson. I have got married about a year ago and changed my name. So that was like a big deal for me. Um, and I feel like the universe said you did the right thing because so far it's worked out pretty well. Um, <laughs> and I'm a 33 year old FBI dressage rider. I, um, am based in the summers in Gruner village, Colorado and in the winters in Wellington, Florida. And I was born and raised in El Cajon, California. Wow. I love it. So tell us about Quartet, your horse that you rode at the world championship. He is precious. So tell us all about him. He is a 14 year old. He's registered Brandenburg warm blood, but that's never on any show entries. So you'll always see him as a German warm blood. He's quite small. He's like 16 one. And Kylie has owned him now for going on three years. And we originally bought him for her. And that's really his main job in life is to be her horse. But she wanted him finish the Grand Prix and to get some show mileage. So um, she was gracious enough to be ride him during the season. And then usually when we're home for the summer, she rides him the whole time. And he is a wonderful horse. He's really funny and very self-assured in a way. Like he gets nervous at venues, but like really has grown to love showing. He thinks it's like the best thing since sliced bread. The whole world is about him. So according to him, he thought he should go to every single world championship around. And so he's very happy that Mm -hmm. he got to go there and experience that. And he just loves to be on the road. He's a horse that always tries 150% in the ring. And I think that is kind of a hope that everyone could have or a dream for their first world championship to be on a horse like him, because I feel like he gives you so much confidence. And that is, that is something that not every horse can do for every rider. So I feel very, very, very blessed that I got to experience what I did this summer with him before I have other horses in the pipeline, like a Paxton or whatever, and that need a little more guidance. He really has risen to the occasion and says kind of, no matter what the atmosphere is, you got it, mom, like sit down and ride and I will do my job. And I'm going to be very fancy while I'm doing it. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's really great to have a horse, you know, with, with that kind of attitude and then also, you know, kind of the ability to to perform at, at his best, you know, and, and show himself off. And I mean, that, I think that's really fun. Yeah. He's so, the one that you always can go into the ring and say like, okay, that's enough, like easy now because he really loves to really loves to show off. So t- tell us about like how you two came together. You know, what was your story leading up to the world championships and, and, you know, qualifying. And, and I mean, that, that, that's kind of a, a long process. Yeah. So um, I started, I did his first Grand Prix in January of 2021. And, you know, he was just, re- he was really purchased for Kylie. And that is, like I said, still his main job in life. And he just happens to switch riders really well. And he happens to be a lot more talented than we ever kind of thought he was going to be and gave him credit for. And I think a huge part of that talent is his heart because he's not always, some things aren't the easiest for him. And he just, will always try. And that is not something you can buy. That's just the gift that he gives. And you don't always know when you purchase them. So I felt very lucky that we got him that way. And then I showed him last year. I took him to festival. I was named to the Compiègne Nations Cup team that out of my first European tour, but we got over there and had EHV restrictions. We actually couldn't compete, but I did take him to Auckleighton last year and had a great show at Auckleighton and then came home, did festival. Then this year, Kylie said she rode him all the way up until... I left for Florida in um, November and then he went and did the, I took back over the ride when I got to Florida and he went and did the CDIW in Ocala two weeks Mm -hmm. later. And (laughs) he's just, he's just great. Like he loves, he can switch gears like so fast and, and she was able to do all the Grand Prix on him at home and I could take him and show him. And originally, you know, I just wanted to get some mileage and my main goal for the whole season was to be named to a nation's cup team. So, um, she said, why don't you go ahead and show him this year, get him some more mileage. She couldn't come down and ride a lot. So she said, you just take him and show him and progress him as much as you can. And he just kept, you know, we thought maybe he'd break a 70 at some point, maybe in his career. And he just kept getting better and better and better. And 
more excited to show and more enthusiastic. And so when we were named to Wellington Nations Cup team and got some personal bests at the couple shows before that, we were all like really excited. And I hoped to then um, possibly take him to Europe again and do something like a Nations Cup over there, especially because I have Paxton coming up. And Quartet is in the barn we call him Ted. He's very, he's a very good traveler, like very steady, the settled in place is great. And him and Pax are best friends. So I thought it'd be great if I could take Uncle Ted to Europe and do a Nations Cup on him and drag Pax along to get experience the, all of life. And then when they said, you know, there's a chance you might be on the short list, I said, okay, but come on. I don't know that he's a wag horse. Like I understand, like I appreciate the opportunities, but I understand he's probably not a wag horse. And they were like, oh, you should go to Europe and see. And then obviously being named to the Rotterdam and the Aachen team, Rotterdam with Paxton and Aachen with Quartet. Like I think at any big dressage rider, one of their bucket list items would be to ride at Aachen. And it did not disappoint. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and that for me was was the highlight of my summer (laughs) because I like uh, that was what I thought was going to be the highlight of my summer I should say because I definitely thought like okay Pax can do Rotterdam Nations Cup and he just needs the experience that's going to be by far the biggest atmosphere he'd ever seen and he's a very atmosphere sensitive horse so let's just go get the mileage and then to do Aachen and like a high pressure environment on a horse like Ted that's so trustworthy and honest I felt like that's going to be a really good experience for me and then I'm going to come home and I'm going to train all the horses with Quinn while Adrian's in Europe. And then we're all going to go to festival. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and it wasn't quite and, what happened. It got more exciting. <laughs> yeah. And then we, and you know, when I called Kylie and I said, they want to put, or they're naming Pax to the Rotterdam team and Ted to the, originally um, we thought they were going to name Ted to the Rotterdam team. And then I wasn't going to go to Aachen at all. And when they released the information that they were going to name Pax, the Rotterdam team and Ted to the Aachen team. And I called Kylie, I think she probably almost fell out of her chair. She was so oh. excited. It was, you know, we've been working together for 10 years and this has always been our dream to develop a horse and a rider and an owner all together and to have a team horse. And so, and she's been so patient and so supportive on all, you know, you go through all these ups and downs trying to get this far. And so to be able to share that with her was incredibly special. And then she couldn't come to Aachen and she was supposed to have back surgery. And she said, I'm going to delay my back surgery in case you get into herning. And I said, I'm not going to world championships. Like, no, there are so many good horses. No. And she's like, well, you're going to herning. I'm buying a refundable ticket. And I'm moving my back <laughs> surgery. And I was like, oh, okay, like whatever you say, ha ha ha. <laughs> and then um, I hung out and waited in Europe because, you know, the team selection took a little while. And I said, you know, even if I hang out here and I have the honor of being the reserve, like just to be in that environment where you get to see those kind of people train and experience that, like I am, a, that is a huge accomplishment. So um, then when I was named to the team, to say the least, there was a lot of tears <laughs> and it was very, very, very surreal. And it was such a long process and not something that we thought was even in the cards this year. And, you know, I've worked with Kylie for so long, but also with Adrian and her and I have worked together for a long time and we've been very good friends for even longer. So it was a dream of ours to be on a team together. That's always been like the ultimate goal. And we thought we'd have to wait a little while longer because every summer I sit at home and dutifully train and watch everybody online. And so to get to do this this year was pretty incredible. Oh, that just, that makes me so happy for you both. I mean, that's, it's such a cool story and, and to, to know you guys a little bit and to see it was even, it was just so fun and exciting and, and really true joy training your horses and, and the relationship between you and Adrian and the horses, it, it really really shows. And, um, so tell us what was it like at the world championships? Um, I can't even imagine. I think in the moment I, you know, obviously this is my first one. So I don't know. I think everybody wants to say, Oh my gosh, it was amazing. It was this, it was that in the moment. I think everyone gets there. I probably more when it's one of your first times. And I definitely am the kind of person I, I get emotional. I like, I, I love what I do. I've worked really hard to be here and I know what an honor it is. So 
So I have worked really, really hard actually with Laura King um, on knowing when to use those emotions and when to say, okay, I recognize them, but I'm not going to give them, they're not, don't have space right now. And so for me, I really went there and wanted to do my job for the first, especially for the Grand Prix day, because the whole point of the going to Herning was to try to get a qualification for the U.S. to go to Paris. So the Grand Prix day was obviously very, very important. So um, I think that was very much in put my head down in work mode for a while. And, you know, Adrian went to Aachen. She said, I hope you take a minute to realize that you're riding down centerline on Ted at Aachen. And I said, you have known me long enough. If I do that, I'm going to start crying and I will never stop. And there's <laughs> no way I'm going to be able to ride. Mm. And she's like, okay, how about when you're done, take a minute Aww. to realize. Yeah. Yeah. And so after the fact, though, once the Grand Prix was done and I was like, okay, well, I didn't make the special, which is completely fine. There was amazing horses. Then it was just really, really incredible. And for me, the, the most interesting thing for for Aachen and for Hanning was getting to sit and watch everybody train and yeah. seeing how they really work with different types of horses and obviously not just physically different types of horses, but, um, you know, the different ways that horses struggle with certain things that are really good at certain things. And then they all have something they struggle with and how they confront that. And then also seeing how so many of these top riders are still so excited to ride. Like they, yeah. like you can tell they love to ride and they love to train. Sure. Everybody wants to win, but you can tell when they train, they love to train. And that is for me inspiring because I think like, you know, if you, if you do it just because you love the show, I think you're never going to be successful because those are like uh, six minutes out of how many hours of training that you do. And for those six minutes, you need to have like all the training you need to go right plus the horse to feel good, plus the weather to be good, plus yeah. you to be happy and your right hip to not be tight and your left hand to stay low. Mm -hmm. And so if you wait for, to see success and to get enjoyment just for those six minutes, I think you're missing, you're missing out on so much. And so to see all these trainers, you know, pick away at the little things and understand their horses and train smart, but still get stuff done was really, really inspiring to me. So. That was for sure a highlight. And then getting to see Adrian finish six in the freestyle was incredible because yeah. she's, you know, so important to me and I was so proud of her. And then being able to see Glamourdale in person was pretty unreal. That is an amazing wow. horse and she's an incredible rider. Wow. That was awesome. Uh, I, and I, I mean, it, it, I'm just, you know, dreaming of, of being there <laughs> in, in Austin and, you know, um, ob observing the same thing and then Herning. You know, we, we all, you fans of the sport, we all can appreciate what it's like to actually, I mean, you know, everybody watches the videos, but if, you know, to be there and in the presence of, you know, uh, a beautiful horse and, and you know, lovely riding and, and all that stuff is just, you know, like you said, really, really special and, and really try to um, soak it in and, and, and get those inspirations to, to take home with you and, and to come home and to ride. So what I was going to ask you is about your second horse, Paxton. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you came home and then you were riding at festival, like right away. So tell us a little bit about that experience about coming down, you know, from the high of the world equestrian games or the world championships that, that America did qualify for, for Paris already. So they've got, you know, they got a team spot wait, waiting for riders. And, uh, you know, t tell us about Paxton and, and the Festival of Champions. So Paxton is also owned by Kylie Lurie. And we've had him since the like middle of the seven-year-old year. And he is, like, incredibly talented. He's also very sensitive. And he can, all, he can be a little difficult in a sense that if he doesn't know what you want, his go-to thing is just kind of to have a bit of a meltdown or panic. And that, so that's taken a little bit of a while to gain his confidence and his trust and um, I've done a lot of kind of alternative, strange things with him. Like I, I taught him to clicker train because I realized a while ago he just has no concept of how to learn, actually learn things, like why we're doing things. So um, I spent a lot of time with him on the ground and whatever. And he's really, uh, the fact that he went into the Rotterdam ring and 
and kept it together and tried to do everything and stayed with me. And uh, that was huge for him. So he stayed over in Europe with me until five days before he left to Harding. And then flew home with a couple other horses. And then Quinn Iverson, who is Adrian's assistant and rides for us when we're gone and rides a lot of young horses. And obviously she just won the U25 and we are all incredibly proud of her and incredibly thankful (laughs) for her because she did a hell of a job with all the horses at home. I told him very jealous because she got very skinny. Um, (laughs) She had to have a lot of horses because you guys only had a couple and they had yeah, yeah, she had to get horses ready for festival. She's like my hero too. I was like, go Quinn. <laughs> like that's huge. Yeah, she's <laughs> she was did a phenomenal job. And so she rode him um for like a week before I got home. And so he was home, had a had a couple little bit of downtime and then rode him for a week. And you know, after Rotterdam, he didn't show at all. So he just had the week of Auk and he had totally off because I was busy and he just got to lunge a little bit and hang out. Um, and then just got some good concentrated training time. So he was pretty fresh coming into festival and had enough time to rest and recover. And he is never a horse that struggles for energy ever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wish he would, but he doesn't. (laughs) Um, and so she rode him for a week and then I came home and I rode him four times maybe, and then took him to festival. And there wasn't really, there wasn't really downtime, I would say, or a time to even come down after you're you know all the shows and being in Europe for so long being away from life and then because we moved all the horses home from Florida so we left Florida and then moved all the horses home in different a couple different stages and then left for Europe about 10 days after not even 10 days after the year horse after all horses left so it has been very very busy for a very long time <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> um I think we were both everybody Adrian I everybody was a little bit in the mode of like just keep keep going keep going keep going keep going because if you take one minute to kind of say ah I'm home for six days you're not going to get up again so you know we jumped right back into riding I rode I think eight horses the first day I was home and just kind of like soldiered on and stayed tough all through festival and we were we really wanted to go you know we had some fun young horses and obviously, I think taking packs is another a great uh, just change of atmosphere, another chance for him to get down center, center line and be against some good horses. And he really is one that needs the mileage. And we wanted to show and support that event. I think it's an important event in our country. And I think that if we can make an effort, like we've been away all summer, but obviously our horses, Quinn's done a great job with the horses. And we feel like they were fit and ready. So we really wanted to do that because we really do love the development of them, not just the big tour ones, but we really love the development. You know, I went, got home from the festival and the first horse I was on was a four-year-old. And, and I also, we bought a little three-year-old stallion in January and I had not ridden him yet because I was being very, very, very diligent <laughs> about not getting hurt before Europe. And then Good idea. In, <laughs> yeah. And so I had someone start him and then he came home and got gelded and the girl at the bar has been riding him. And, um, I, I cave and got on him once before festival because he was being so good and he's so cute. <laughs> and then it was like the highlight of my day. The first day I got home from festival and I got to ride him and Aww. I was so excited. He was very good. He was very nice to me. So I think it was, it was important for both Adrian and I to kind of rally and, make it there for that because it is such an important event and it's such a fun event and it was good to be there and see everybody from the team again too oh that is so cool well i hope you guys are gonna get a little downtime now where you can just take a breath and just absorb all of it i mean you guys have just done amazing things and uh you know i'm a fan i'm a fan of paxton my big Mike and Paxton are besties. They were roomies <laughs> and they love each other. So I'm a huge fan of Paxton as well. And I can't wait to see you as you develop him. Um, but Katie, we can't thank you enough for your time. You've been so generous. Can you tell us a little bit um, where we can find you and all the good stuff to follow you? I am probably not the best person at social media. I'll be the first person to say that. Um, I'm working on it. So currently, uh, you can find me on Instagram at Katie underscore Durhammer. And then I'm also on Facebook as well, but that's really it. And I, I enjoy and love seeing everybody else's stuff through Facebook and Instagram and social media. I just something I personally (laughs) struggle with. And so in all your spare time, my friend, 
<laughs> in all my spare time. And so um, I actually just spoke to a, a couple people about, I'm like, okay, it's time for me to buckle down and get serious. Is there someone that, that can help me do this? Because apparently I am failing miserably. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there are, but we'll send some people your way for sure to get it started. So Katie, thank great. you so thank much you. for your time. Thank you so much. It was really great to talk with you. The Horsemanship Radio Podcast is dedicated to the advancement of great horsemanship throughout the world. Monty Roberts often stops by to present on this podcast, hosted by his daughter and legacy strategist, Debbie roberts Laux. The show includes segments, tips, and interviews exploring effective training centered on the well-being of the horse. This multiple award-winning podcast has 1.6 million downloads to date. Horsemanshipradio.com, sponsored by Hands On Gloves and Monty Roberts University. Well, for this week's Trainer Tip of the Week, we're so happy to have Katie Durheimer. She stayed on the line with us. She just rode in the World Equestrian Games in 2022 in Herning, and we're so happy to have her. Uh, We just were talking a little bit off air about sponsorship and working hard. And Katie, I think you have such a great message. We wanted to uh, share it with everyone. So I'll let you get started. I think that everyone's dream is to find a sponsor and to get incredible horses. And I, I think that that is obviously a very, very key part of it. But I think what's really, really important is finding that person that you work well with is you have to go into it and to value and learn what's important to them. And to not always be in it for something that benefits you. Because if you, you know, are humble and work hard and get on it, literally every single horse that you can get on. I, before I had talk, before I started with Kylie, I taught all sorts of people and rode all, literally all sorts of horses. It's at literally teaching a horse anything is still learning to teach a horse something. And that, that's mm-hmm. the huge part about dressage. It doesn't, it's not a discipline specific. Teaching is teaching. And so when I met Kylie, it was not for a sponsorship. It was just to work with her and her kids. And I said, that's fine. Um, they're amazing kids with some really good, good horses. And Kylie is anyone that meets her. She's just an amazing person. She's very, very honest and very straightforward and just the kind of the best kind of person you could want to work with. And then it's kind of just evolved into this situation that we have now. And she's been very clear that the reason it worked is because I valued what she valued and made her feel respected and appreciated. And so I think if you want these opportunities, you know, it takes a whole lot of luck and it takes a whole lot of hard work and you just have to keep working hard and knocking at the door. And at some point, something's going to give, something's going to break. You know, I was out of horses before I started with Kylie. I took a six month break because I had been chasing the dream for so long and kind of said, you know what, I'm broke. I need to go back to school and be an adult. And (laughs) now 10 years later, I am doing something. It was like, you know, someone had asked me, what would your dream be? I think I would have not even been brave enough to say this, to say, I, everyone wants to go to the Olympics, but to say, I want in 10 years to make a Joe world championship, or I want to have three Grand Prix horses in my barn right now that I have made like that. I don't even think I could have said that out loud. And she, she made that all happen. And so I think it's just really, really hard or really important for people to remember. You have to see outside yourself. You have to see and value what makes other people feel appreciated and valued. And even if that doesn't always benefit you, because that I think is, oh, that good karma is always going to come back at some mm-hmm. point. I, I, that's the only explanation I have because I feel like between her and the dedication of my mom and my dad, you know, with my sport when I was younger, and then the dedication of Adrian and Debbie and Pam Chapter, who owned my young rider horse that I, she let me lease him out of the goodness of her heart. And we're still dear friends. I mean, that's the only explanation I can have for having that many incredible people come into my life to create this opportunity that, I mean, I don't know how else to explain it. Well, well, I think it's so important and and I'm very lucky too. I've been sponsored um, and had an amazing experience and I'm so thankful for the people that have done that for me because um, I wouldn't have Grand Prix horses, you know, I wouldn't have been able to afford to do all the things that I've been able to do. Uh, but I think that's really important because if you really ask people, 
why do they sponsor riders? They're really sponsoring the people. And I think that yeah. it, it's the hard work. It's the kindness. It's, it, it, it's the value to the horses. That's what people really look at as sponsor. And, you know, a sponsor can be all types, right? It can be your parents. If you're looking at parents, yep. it, can, it can be someone that gives you a little bit of money to go to a competition, right? Like it, yep. it, it, there's so many ranges of what a sponsor is. And I think that it is so important to know that you are, are seen, you're valued, and it is going to be the person at the end of the day that works hard. And, and maybe it, you don't win young riders and that's okay. You know, you maybe yep. don't, yep. you know, uh, we all went, you know, um, and, and enjoyed it and enjoyed the adventure. And, and you really do need a sponsor at the end of the day, that's going to be with you for 10 years. And it may be that you, yep. you, you, you start with some, some very basic courses and, and it grows over time. And, and I think or that you don't start with almost any horses. You never yeah, know exactly. who that person is going to be. And I think it's the biggest thing that I always, you know, I didn't coach a lot of young riders. You are, someone is always, you're always seen. Someone is always watching. Someone is always noticing the good and the bad. So that I think is so important. And one thing I actually have realized recently too, with young riders is that if it, even if it's your parents that are your sponsor, you need to treat them like your sponsor. Yes. You need to take the parental part of it that, you know, everyone has their opinions and everyone feels like maybe their parents aren't fair all the time and you get whatever. We all were, we all were kids at some point, but you need to take that out of it and realize what a giant sacrifice and support that is that your parents are doing for you and value them like they're a sponsor. And I think that's something that I wish I could have understood when I was a kid. And I wish I could have helped some other kids understand. Yeah. And also little secret, I had didn't even have my gold medal until literally January of this year. Yeah. So you, it doesn't matter if you get in the ring and show Grand Prix when you're 21, if you go to U25, if you win young riders, or if you don't, it doesn't matter. Like all that stuff, sure, is a great education, but the biggest thing is to find good people, treat them well, and operate yourself in a way that you can be respected in the sport and value your horses and respect your horses. And then you just work hard and the cards will fall where they fall. But And well, be, will, be willing to make a lot of sacrifices. I spend yeah, a lot I, of time away from home. You do, and your husband. and um, But I, I, I do love that you say treat everyone. And that is, you know, at Young Riders, there were, um, you know, there were us, there were chefs that donated time. There were um, yep. all kinds of people that were there donating their time. And a lot of us felt not appreciated. And, and that was tough yep. because, um, you know, we were all donating and giving back to the sport. And I see it at Pony Club too. I see it all over. And, and I just think it's just, that's why I, I really wanted us to talk about this because I think it's such an important topic um, it, is because I, I do hear a lot of young riders say, oh, you know, when I just get a sponsor and it'll just happen and it'll be this and that. And, and I think in my head, <laughs> yeah. like I laugh. Yeah. Just like you did. Yeah. <laughs> like, have, have fun with that. Let me know how yeah. that goes for you. <laughs> let, let us know how that goes for you. But that's not the point, right? At the end of the day, it is the journey yeah. and it's the people along the way, um, that you're going to see and that spent, you're going to be a part of. Yeah. I spent three hours. I didn't do it between when I got home from Europe and going to festivals because I did not have the brain power. But on Monday when I got home from festival, I spent three hours writing thank you cards. Yeah. To not even like my core people here at home, but to USEF staff, to farriers, to vets, to, I mean, that, those are the people that it takes to get you that far. And you would be surprised how far a handwritten 10 minute thank you card will go. I once asked Kylie, what can I get you? My sponsor, what can I get you to say thank you? Like, what do you value? What makes you feel appreciated? Like, is it flowers? Is it a bottle of wine? Like, what can they do for you? And she's like, honestly, a handwritten card. And I said, I, I can do that. Like, <laughs> yep. It doesn't cost, so money, but it doesn't doesn't cost much money. <laughs> <laughs> she probably has gotten her body weight and thank you cards since I've known her because I have a lot to be thankful for. But, you know, if you put those little things don't go unnoticed. And that's the thing that makes you, makes you, you know, stand out 
and people say, you know, she took that extra time to realize what a sacrifice this was or how much effort it took out of their personal time to be there. Well, I mean, I, this, this, I mean, this is a wonderful message and, you know, I think Reese, Reese and you, Katie, I've, I've kind of said it all, you know, you, you won't have people around you or, you know, good people around you if you don't appreciate them. And if they yep. don't feel appreciated, they're, they're going to go somewhere else or they're going to spend their money some way. I mean, you know, sp- spend it differently. And, you know, everybody who makes any kind of effort needs to kind of feel, feel appreciated and uh, I, I think that that will go that will take you a long way. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's I'm glad we talked about it. I think it's something that's Me too. near and dear to my heart because I've like I said, I did a lot of young writers. I've worked I did young writers and juniors and then I've worked with a lot of young writers and juniors. And I, you know, my mom and dad worked very hard to let me do what I was able to do when I was younger. But then there was no way that they had could financially support, you know, anything like this. We wrote it with home breads and you know, my mom was my trainer and she did an incredible job, but it's because of the incredible people that I have had a chance to have in my life. Like it blows my mind that I, that have come together to provide opportunities like this and open those doors. Yeah. Well, Katie, well said. Thank you so much. Again, you, you see why Katie represented the United States. You're an amazing person. And <laughs> We're really thankful you were able to to give us this tip and and to stand and talk about it because I think it really is truly so important. So, Katie, how can our listeners follow you online? All the good stuff. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Katie underscore Durhammer. And I'm also on Facebook. I don't have a website. I'm a pretty low maintenance social media person. Um, <laughs> and I hope if you guys are ever in Wellington and see me at a show or anything like me or Adrian come over and meet us. It's, you know, we're just normal people. And I think that was special for me to see at Lamplight. They had an autograph signing and how many juniors and young writers got to come. And that was, they were so excited and I am a pretty private person. So I was a little like, Oh, this is going to be really awkward, but to see all these junior and young writers. And I was thinking back when I was their age, I would have killed to have had my hat signed and take a picture. And so if you see us around, like you come over and you say hi, because I promise like, we're just like everybody else. We probably yeah. smell really bad if we're at the horse show. <laughs> <laughs> well, Katie, as always, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I can't wait to continue to follow you all along your journey. Thank you. Have a good evening. Well, I just wanted to remind everybody that we've got a great book club going, Bolder, Braver, Brighter by Daniel Stewart. We're really enjoying it, Phil and I. I'm going to read it on my way to regionals, honestly. Um, And I've been flipping through, so I'm looking forward to that. So uh, read the book because we're going to close her out here shortly. As always, you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website, dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook, just search Dressage Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. My website is maplecrestfarmky.com and my email is reese at horseradionetwork.com. I think the best way to find me is probably through Facebook or my email is philip at horseradionetwork.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors for allowing us to put on a good show. That's Kentucky Performance Products. If you'd like to support our show and the Horse Radio Network, you can do that through the auditor program found at horseradionetwork.com. Everybody, keep your heels down and your shoulders back and we will talk to you next week. Thank you.